guys what's going on uh, so I wanted to show you another uh, implementation of the video that I previously did uh, showing you guys the uh, auto mapping with the OSPF database um, I added some more features um, as far as the uh, uh, script is concerned or the mini application if you will so I added some visualization aspects of it so I wanted to show you guys how that works and, and kind of show you like a live representation of what it looks like after I break a neighborship between a particular set of routers so ideally uh, looked around and there's a library called Network X which is pretty freaking awesome that Python has and I didn't get into the I didn't really start diving that deep into graphs until recently but then the deeper I dive the more I realize how awesome and useful it is and us at network us as network engineers how um, how exposed to data science and other aspects of programming that uh, we probably don't even realize we're actually more exposed to than anybody else in the programming world or in the in this in the IT industry specifically from the aspect of networks and you know at the end of the day we know networks as a collection of router switches and different nodes and then we use protocols to help extend communications across uh, network boundaries well in the data science world once you start getting into like machine learning and and, uh, and uh, data analysis um, a lot of these actual um, concepts that we know from a networking perspective is heavily implemented in the side of um, the data science world and for instance like the graph and vertexes and edges that's a very data science focused um, concept so it's really cool that you know going into the networking side and starting to correlate this stuff uh, didn't realize how how exposed to the stuff we are a lot of the times you know data scientists use these this type of um, data structure for like um, social networking um, correlation um, uh, visualizations for for large data sets to so relationships you know I'm just looking at it from a router switch perspective so before I get into it I just wanted to go over that because I was highly 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 uh, uh, surprised on how much that actually relates because I'm reading through this network X package and it is a lot of really weird language and a lot of terms that I'm not used to hearing and um, it was just really odd and then I start diving deeper into it and we'll actually start looking on YouTube for um, examples of how to actually implement some of this stuff and everybody who I'm seeing is all data scientists so I'm like, man, you know, I, at first it felt a little overwhelming, but then you, once you get past the terms, you start realizing that it is networks. You know, concepts like for the Dijkstra algorithm that we use in OSPF, um, spanning tree, uh, shortest path first, um, you, you start looking at, um, you start getting into it, start realizing that the, the data science aspect of it is, is heavily influenced, and the networking side builds on top of that, so before I start going more into a rant so we're gonna go back to the original EVNG topology that I have here and so what I did was I, I used this diagram earlier and I showed you guys from a textual conception from a text perspective what the actual um, visualization looks like so I'm gonna replay the script and then show you guys what that looks like again so we'll go here and we'll uh, let's make sure this is visible for everybody and we'll go here so we're going to just do a run of the script and right now it's actually going to go through and talk to all the devices, get the facts for it, print it out, and then actually do a visualization once it's completed. So it's looking at the OSPF database like I explained earlier. Um, before I only had to print out a text representation but um, at the end of this it should show a visualization of the diagram that, that we had, uh, well of the topology that I had there earlier. So as you see it's building out the graph now and this is what it looks like so hopefully you guys can see this let me see if I can blow this up uh, hopefully I can blow this up I don't know if you guys can see this clearly there we go uh oh it's not what I wanted so as I, as I said you guys can see that it built out that topology going out the OSPF database and my main focus is that I wanted to be able to dynamically build out network topologies um, without actually having to go into the network if I just get management IP addresses I can actually go in and build this out um, live so I'm gonna show you guys what will happen if I take this and I'm gonna go into one of the routers here I'm gonna shut down the interface right and then show you guys what it looks like so 
once I shut the interface down. So show IP interface brief. Now show IP OSPF neighbor. So you see that I got my three neighbor ships from router 2's perspective. So router 1, 3, and 4. I'm going to shut down this interface between router 3, 2, and 4 and then show you guys what that neighbor ship looks like after I shut that. That diagram looks like after I shut that interface down. So let's go ahead and go back to router 2 interface gig and we want to make sure we shut down the neighbor ID for router 4. Oops. We're going to shut that down. So that interface is down. Show IP interface brief. Let's give it a second because uh, I want to make sure that the OSPF database, I didn't do any um, update or any um, optimizations of the database, so it's all working at default timer. So it may take a, like a second for the pop, pop, um, propagation to happen. So let me make sure, show IP OSPF neighbor. That's good. And then let's make sure that the database is uh, router self originate. Let's make sure the database is updated. So I'm not reflecting router 3 as a neighbor anymore. Perfect. So now technically when I go into this diagram and I rerun this script. So this was the diagram before with router 2's adjacency to router 4. Let's go ahead and rerun the script and then see what that does after uh, shutting down that interface and breaking that neighborship. So all routers are still accessible. Um, it's still going to run through the same loop and uh, communicate with all the devices. I'm going to give that a second. Doo -doo -doo. And then as you can see from router 2's perspective, or router yeah, 2's perspective, it's missing that additional neighbor that would have been there before. So you see that's updated correctly. And as we build the graph, let's see what happens. Perfect. So now, as you can see, the new graph that is represented is only the adjacencies between 2, 1, and 3. So this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. And uh, let's go ahead and just restore that link and then see what that does. So, this gig 0 slash 2. Let's do a no shut. Let's make sure that the neighbor ships come back up. Should take a second. Da -da -da -da. So, we got OSPF back up. Let's make sure the neighbor's there. It's already there. And then let's make sure the database is refer referencing uh, router 4 as adjacency. So you see that's updated now. So let's go ahead and run that script again. diagram is being generated and let's see if it updated perfect so now as you can see the diagram is back to being where it's at so this is like one of the, the, the I mean to me this is one of the coolest things um, on uh, for, for some of the stuff that I've been working on um, to be honest with you this is one of the coolest things for me um, it's just being able to do this dynamically and then build these diagrams um, and like I said, once you start getting into understanding the logic behind it, you can build these diagrams based off of whatever criteria that you want. Right now, I'm doing it very cheatingly, I, I guess you would say, because I'm going into the database of each device and I'm looking at its own self-originated LSAs and then building the table based off of that. When in reality, I can essentially go to one device, build out the entire network, looking at the database from a single device perspective, because OSPF is link state, um, like I stated in the other video, and build out an entire diagram. And once you get to, say, like maybe 100 nodes, 200 nodes in the service provider world, that becomes super, super, super powerful because most of our times is going going into the routers and doing show commands and then trying to by hand build out these diagrams if you don't have a good accurate up-to-date um, documentation like a lot of networks do so uh, yeah just wanted to show you guys what that looks like um, and uh, you know hopefully that you guys get something cool out of it and uh, um, you know just for the heck of it I can go through I'll go through some of the logic uh, maybe let's see should I go through the logic well I mean I'm not gonna go through the logic because um, I am it, it, there, it gets a little complicated and it's a lot to go back through but 
I, I can tell you that the visualization part was probably the more difficult piece to get after because of the fact that it's very focused for the data science side of things. So, like I said, the, the library that I use to do the visualization, it's NetworkX, and then it uses uh, matplot.lib, um, or matplotlib, yeah, matplotlib underneath it to actually do the actual diagramming itself. So that, that part was a little challenging, but... After like a day or two, when you run through the documentation and you see some examples online, you can kind of get the concept and then do your own implementation on that. And so this is essentially what that is. And you can get really cool. You can actually start replacing nodes and do your own custom icons, do custom links if you wanted to go through and start validating if the links were serial links. Um, you can actually extract the cost of the links and then add the cost so you can actually see what the cost looks like. Um, Network X has a... Um, a uh, shortest pass first, uh, a Dijkstra algorithm. I think it's like NX dot. Uh, is it? Yeah, shortest path uh, 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 method. So it can actually run the Dijkstra algorithm for you, and then you can see the shortest path based off of whatever nodes that you uh, select. So it, it's really cool, man. Um, just wanted to show you guys uh, what that looks like and the gra the graphical um, implementation on what I already built uh, before. Alright, thanks again. Later.